You know, Greg, one of the conversations come up all the time is turning setbacks into a comeback. Without going into your bio and all that good stuff, they'll read all that great stuff online. Take a moment, if you would, and share what is just one of the secrets for folks who've had some type of setback in their life in order to start the journey on the comeback trail. Well, surround yourself with people that you have respect for, not people you have influence over is step number one. And door number two is where are our credible sources anymore? Seek counsel and not opinion. I did a book a few years ago called Three Feet from Gold, taken from the Bible, Personal Development, Think and Grow Rich. And I realized one simple tool. People tend to listen to opinion rather than counsel. Opinions based on ignorance, lack of knowledge and experience, or counsels based on wisdom, knowledge and mentorship. If you go out to write a best-selling book and tell your friends and family, they might talk you out of it if they've never done it. That's their opinion. But if you go to Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, he's going to say, hey, before you get started, here's what you need to know and give you counsel based on wisdom, knowledge and mentorship. If we would spend our activities only seeking counsel and ignoring people's opinion as we move forward through these challenging times, that's the day your life would change. You know, you talk about the book Three Feet from Gold, one of the books that certainly changed my life. I'm not sure if you're aware of that when I was going through a very, very dark time back about eight years ago. And um, for those folks that have not read the book yet, take a moment if you can and just frame the conversation. One, what is the premise of the book? And number two, uh, how'd you go about being able to write the book? And then who's it for? So kind of three part question. Oh my gosh, it's a <laughs> giant. Each one of those is a mini seminar. So this is the first major book I did with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. It's called Three Feet from Gold, part of the Think and Grow Rich series. It's taken from the very first chapter of Think and Grow Rich, where an aspiring person named R.U. Darby had gold fever. And he went out west, knew nothing about gold, again, just his opinion, and he started digging, found a nugget, and he hid it and buried it and went home and told his family and friends, said, we're going to be rich in the gold industry. So they chipped in money to buy equipment so they could pull it out by the ore cart. And when the first cart came up, sure enough, it was filled with gold. Woohoo! They're rich, right? But then the gold ran out. He kept digging, but there's no more gold. Defeated, he walks out of the mine and says, I quit. And sees a junk man walking by. He says, hey, buddy, give me $200. I'll say this mine, the equipment, the deed. I'm out of here. I'm out of the gold business. I'm going to go back home to Maryland. Well, the junk man surveying the equipment was worth thousands because all the family chipped in. The money said, absolutely, you got a deal and gave him a few hundred bucks. Well, Darby goes home defeated, but the junk man sought counsel. He went to a local engineer and says, what happened? This cat hit gold and ran out. The engineer starts laughing. He goes, that's mining 101. Everyone knows that gold runs in a straight line. It's called a gold vein. What Darby did is he came in one side, hit the gold, and popped back into dirt. He said, go back to where they discovered treasure. Go three feet, 90 degrees the opposite direction. You'll tap back into the vein. Well, not only did the junk man pull millions upon millions of dollars out, but that's what fills Fort Knox today. And the moral is how many times have we or someone we know Quit one class short from a degree or sales or marketing or marriage. It's easy to quit, but it's the people that persevere and go that extra little bit. They're the ones that we tell the stories about today. You know, where do you get this passion from that, that you have? Thanks for sharing that, by the way. I mean, you're someone that speaks on stages. You're someone that speaks virtually. You're someone that does workshops. You have something called Secret Knock. I mean, we'll get into all of that. But um, where does this passion come from, this burning desire that you have to go help other folks be successful and to share these golden nuggets with? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'll be straightforward with everyone. I'm the least qualified guy to do what I do. <laughs> I'm just a regular guy. I got a D in English. I'm dyslexic. I can't spell. You know, play me words with friends. You win every time. But I understood the power of work your strengths and you hire your weaknesses. So I'm not a gifted writer. I'm a good storyteller. So I teamed up with amazing ghost writers and editors that could take my gift of gab and craft it in a way that people would want to read it in book form. And by doing that, I've been published in over 100 books, 45 languages, and recently, check this thing out, just got a star on the Walk of Fame in Las Vegas, all for being an author for a guy who can't really spell very good. The moral of that message is surround yourself again with people that you have respect for, people that can give you counsel, and your life will change accordingly. And that's what I do in every single aspect of my life that keeps me enthusiastic and not hold held back because 
I don't look at my challenges as, you know, they're, 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 they're kind of like a rope holding me back to the shore. I'm just saying who's already accomplished what I want to do, team up with them, let them work their strengths. And I go along the ride and add my benefits along the journey. You know, when you talk about your ride, talk about the person's least qualified, um, one of the questions that we've been asking folks is if they would be comfortable sharing a time where there was a setback in their own life, uh, something didn't go the way they wanted it to, and they were able to use some principle to kind of turn that around. Do you mind sharing that with the audience? Well, every single thing I do is a challenge. <laughs> I'm tired of the challenge. You know, I, I, these guys that write these books like fail forward, fail fast, I just want to just oh, shake them because that's not a good message to be teaching people. I don't want to focus on failing and focusing on setbacks. Forget that. I'm tired of that stuff. I want some success in my life. So I, lately I've been looking at things I've been doing well and doing good and then doing more of that. What a concept, right? Uh, but when I was first in the book industry, what you do is you write something called a query letter. It says who you are, what's your message, why are you an expert, who's going to read your book? And you send these out to you know, editors, the publishers, the agents, the printers. I was turned down by 268 publishers in a row when I did my first book. 268 of them said no. The 269th one said, we'll do your book, just change the title, the beginning, the middle, and the end. <laughs> I told them I couldn't write to it. So I went and got one of these ghost writers who would take my words and craft them in a pay way people want to read it, and it went on to become a global phenomenon. Now, listen, if I would have quit after 50 rejections or 80 or 120 or 212, no one would have blamed me. But by keep going and having that stickability, I've now had the opportunity to impact the lives literally of millions of people across the globe. The question is, where could you be right now watching this if you don't give up three feet away from your own vein of gold? Yeah, give up three feet away, said so brilliantly. Thanks so much for sharing. Question I have for you next is, when you think about not only being a champion, what does it take to be consistent? So you're talking about a, a comeback, and then once you get on track, what's the secret in order to hashtag stay the course? We've heard before consistency is the key, consistency is the key, consistency is the key, and having said that, what do most people struggle with? Well, they struggle with consistency. Talk about yeah. that. I think because people say yes too much and what happens, they bite off more they can chew. So a few years ago, my mentor sat me down and said, look, moving forward, you're such a great yes man, but let's change that. What could you say yes to that you know you'll accomplish and only agree to those things? And by changing that mindset, I realized I started accomplishing all my goals because I only said yes to the few that I knew. I didn't hope. I didn't wish. I didn't believe. I knew I could accomplish. And by having that type of mindset, literally transform myself from the 95% who just dream of success to the top 5% who actually achieve it by having that singular focus. Now, let me be very clear. I have modular focus is something that I've been kind of coining lately. What that means is I run six different corporations at any given time. And I've got a secret weapon named Shannon, Shannon Parsons. She is my little God's gift. So basically what happens with my ADD, I can sit down with her and say, well, by the way, we do these things called hat. Imagine wearing a hat. So I'll sit there and say, okay, Shannon, let's talk secret knock for a little bit. And we, for six minutes, we go, you know, fast and furious. And then all of a sudden I switch hats, go, all right, let's talk about our movie, Wish Man. Here's what we're going to do. And then I say, all right, let's talk about publishing books. All right, let's talk about, and what happens by having that singular focus and that uh, laser beam attention towards something for a minimal amount of time, it gives me a chance to get it all out of my brain dump, so to speak, and I give it to someone who's qualified to have the uh, disc profile where she's really good at the structure to go out and delegate all the things that need to be done to all the different resources at hand. You know, take a moment and talk about something that you do really, really well amongst a number of things is this whole concept around mastermind. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's a concept idea you got from Napoleon Hill. Take a moment, if you would, and talk about the power of mastermind. And then more importantly, having a successful mastermind. And I happen to be a part of some groups that you've, uh, that you've started and they're using these principles. So I want, want to get that to folks that are listening to us as well. Yeah, I own mastermindgroup.com, as a matter of fact. And I realized for myself, people are selling mastermind groups and it's becoming such a buzzword, but they're not doing it correctly. See, basically, if I sell you $10,000 to sit in my living room and we are in a semicircle and all I do is I you know, teach you stuff and pitch you a new product, 
Well, that's not a mastermind. That's just a mini seminar. And unfortunately, that's what people are doing. So myself and my partner, Bonnie and Shannon got together and we created the Mastermind Association where people go through an actual blueprint, uh, Robert's Rules format to follow and to organize, run, host, maintain their own mastermind group the way it's supposed to be done. The way it works is for the first 15 minutes, the host picks a topic, such as, I don't know, a homeless guy down the street. And for 15 minutes, everyone gets out of their own headspace and says, as a collective, a mastermind, how do we help that person? Then once everyone's got that clarity, people sit in something called an opportunity chair and say, hey, my name's Bob. I'm a pet groomer. Things are rough right now. I can't get out there right now and open up my shop because of all the situations, what should I do? And then everyone goes around in a circle and asks clarifying questions. Rather than just giving diagnosis, they go, hey, have you done this? Have you tried this? They ask clarifying questions, and then they go around again and offer feedback and suggestion. But what's nice is that you get a you know view from people that don't have a vested interest in your success and failure. They're just seeing it from a different set of lens. And by having that attention, you can start seeing things from a completely different point of view. You know, you've you, you've won and received so many awards. You were showing us the, the Walk of Fame behind you with the star, which is really cool. Um, you got the Entrepreneur of the Year Award, the Global Award. You've done so many things, by the way. When you look back over just a short period of time of your life, um, what are you most proud of up until this point? What stands out most for you? Well, it's kind of interesting. This star thing was a it was a huge deal for me, and it, it has nothing to do with the star. It has nothing to do with myself. It has to do with my son. Uh, you see, I'm a late in life dad. I'm 57 years old, and I have an eight year old son. So the chances are, you know, we're gonna have limited time together. And I figure, you know, if I got buried into some graveyard, the chance of my son or his kids coming to see that grave is pretty much slim to none. Just people don't do that. But I figured by having that star, every time he's in Las Vegas and walking across from the Bellagio, you know, with him and his buddies, they're going to always look down and say, hey, that's my dad and pour one out for the homie, right? <laughs> and I figure and it's kind of a cool little legacy piece, again, just so that my son can remember me best. Yeah. You know, talk about the search for a mentor today is very difficult, right? Folks say, well, you know, how do I pick a mentor? How do I select a mentor? That's not the question I want you to answer. The question I want you to answer is when you go approach someone to be a mentor, um, what are one, two or three things that, that someone should do um, when they're trying to get someone to work with them and to mentor them along this journey? Yeah, well, I, I can't agree that it's difficult because I've never had that experience. Uh, the secret is to surround yourself with people, again, you have respect for, not people you have influence over. And then door number two, who's getting the results that you want for yourself today? And there is a big difference between a mentor and a coach. So let me be very clear. A mentor is someone that you should not pay. This is somebody who's a grand poobah, you know, that old wise man on top of the hill. You go to them for, you know, feedback, guidance, direction, vision, and then you hire a coach to kick you in the butt to keep you on track to make that dream come true. I think they're two different people. So for example, you know, I've got a great tennis coach and he teaches me my backhand but I have multiple mentors and coaches where then I'm going to sit there and go to my accountant and not ask about my tennis game. I'm going to ask them about financial literacy, but I'm not going to ask them about public speaking. And I'm not going to ask my speaking coach about my you know, writing skills. So I believe in multiple mentors, multiple coaches in our lives, but here's the key who's doing what you want. And then ask that person for guidance. Secret knock. You create a secret knock for a reason. <laughs> Why? <laughs> And, and number two, um, what's the results that folks walk away with um, once they've had a Secret Knock experience? Well, we did everything with Secret Knock kind of like George Costanza opposite day. Anyone that's big fans of, uh, well, I, I got a, a cool little thing over here, of, of, the, of the Seinfeld show back in the day. Yes. Remember this one? Yeah. The Human Fund, right? George yeah. Costanza. So if you're a fan of George Costanza, he did everything the opposite day. So I noticed years ago, people would do these flyers and put photographs of who's coming to speak and then what you're going to learn and the message. And I go, what's the opposite of that? And we said, why don't we do an event where we won't tell you where it is, who will be there, and you just have to trust us. And we built a following of the most powerful like-minded people that come together as a collective that are literally changing history. And I said, well, instead of bringing in coaches, teachers, and mentors, so to speak, I go, why don't we just bring in the person who's doing what you want to do? So if you want to start a clothing line, 
you know, you can go read about them or talk to a mentor or a coach, but I figure, what if I brought in the founder of a multi-billion dollar brand, Ugg Boots, and you can go have some tacos and share a beer and talk about your business with them face to face, knees to knees. And I said, what if you want to start a nonprofit and you could hang out with the founder of Make-A-Wish? Or what if you had a different invention and could hang out with the guy who invented the credit card magnetic strip and change banking? And so we created a family a society, so to speak, of the most powerful like-minded individuals that come together as a collective and we open up our phones and our contacts and we share them very openly and freely. Hmm. You know, we were talking about mentors just a moment ago and I was thinking uh, of all the, the folks you've interviewed and you've talked to so many folks along this journey of life and had so many probably mentors along this journey of life. What's one idea that you've learned from your mentors any one of them that you could just grab, it comes top of mind to you and you could share with us that, that we could walk away with and why. Well, this is it. I just recently, I finished a new book. It's called Wealth Made Easy. And by the way, um, again, remember, there's a difference between being an author and a writer. So an author is the guy whose name goes on a book and you know, a writer is the person who wrote it. Gary Krebs wrote this with me and he was the former publisher of McGraw-Hill Publishing Corporation in New York. Now, who can write a better book? Some knucklehead that got a D in English or this dude right here, right? And we went around for three years and interviewed people worth $100 million to a $1 billion to find their wealth hack. And we sat down with them for hours and sometimes days and then reduced their principle to a soundbite, just one paragraph or a page for this book. So every time you open a page, no matter where you are, you're going to learn something new. The greatest discovery, though, came from someone who wasn't a multimillionaire or a billionaire. He was a close personal friend that changed my entire perspective towards life and business. And he taught me something called CPC. And the person I learned it from is Mark Anthony Bates, by the way. And CPC stands for an acronym, Clues, Patterns, Choices. People listening to this, this is huge. It's about accountability and responsibility for every single thing that happens. Stop blaming other people. It's your fault. And it works like this, CPC. I'm a single guy, so let's say I go out on a first date and the woman's 20 minutes late. Well, that things happen, whatever, but that is a clue. If I go on the second, third, and fourth date with her and she's 20 minutes late every time, that forms a P, which is, stands for pattern. You're seeing something line up. Now, it's my final C, whether my choice, I make a deal with her to show up on time or I break up with her, yell at her or whatever, but it's not her fault. She's just late. Stop trying to change people. And I keep seeing people with a bad reputation in business. They'll cheat your best friend. You do business thinking it'll be different this time. And then when things go awry, you're mad at that person. You saw the clue. You saw the pattern. You made the choice. Suck it up and own your mistake. It'd be like watching a rattlesnake rattle, bite your kid's sister. You go to pet it, get bit, and you're mad at the snake. Hmm. Love it, man. I just, I just love how you share that with us. You know, take a moment if you can and, you know, tell us a little about what is your secret to not time management, but time choices. You know, you hear oftentimes folks that are on the comeback, the champions are like, man, there's just not enough minutes in the day. There's not enough hours. How do people get everything done? And I was wondering with all the interviews you've had and success you had in life, when it comes down to making the right choices, I always say it's never about time management, it's about time choices. The, the question is, what's Greg's secret to managing this whole time thing? Yeah, I think I said earlier before, I got a secret weapon named Shannon Parsons. I mean, so she delegates my time and puts everything together uh, for me so it's all structured. So I'll give you an example. Today, I've got a series of back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back interviews, and tomorrow is wide open. And then on Wednesday, it's back to back to back to back. And then Thursday is wide open. So if it was up to me, I'd probably space them out and be busy all the time. But she makes sure that everything's lined up so I can stay on focus, get dressed one, <laughs> one time so I, don't, I can wear my shorts the other two days and do some yard work, right? So work your strengths, hire your weaknesses, go find yourself a Shannon. Ah, man, I love it. You know, for, for the entrepreneurs that are out there, because there are entrepreneurs that are watching this and they're thinking to themselves, man, you know, I've got to be able to go out there and be able to offer my products and services. I hate selling. I hate asking people to buy anything. Oh, my gosh. I just, it just cringe when it comes to that. Um, what would you say to, to the entrepreneur that's watching right now? And that's their feeling. That's their mindset. I've said it now. I don't know how many times. 
work your strengths <laughs> and your weaknesses. So the realities are if you suck at sales, go find someone who plays at sales and has nothing to sell. Pretty simple stuff. And that's all I do nonstop is I keep finding people that play at something I would work at. So for example, I've got an amazing photographer that makes these pictures that make me look way cooler than I am. And then I hire another 20 year old kid that puts these little memes underneath there. And then I hire another guy and he puts them up on Instagram and Facebook. And then people all comment and drive all this traffic and things of this nature. I work my strengths and then I hire the people again that would play at something that I would have a challenge at. And if we did that in our daily lives, you'd see that you had more free time to focus on what you do best. Yeah. What does Greg do for fun when he's not out saving the world and trying to make a difference for other folks? Well, I'm constantly playing. You guys ever come to the house? Trust me, we're going to, it's, it's going to go down <laughs> around here. Uh, it's just me and my son. It's a bachelor pad to the highest degree. We got a pool table and basketball court. We got ping pong. We got bocce ball. We have indoor bocce ball. We have Frisbee golf. We have skateboard scooters, quads, you name it. We're out there playing. So each and every day out uh, there doing some type of activity. It's so funny. I'm 57. I still skateboard every day. <laughs> all right, we're down uh, time. I know I wish we could be here all day, but three quick questions. The first question is, um, what would you say to the person that's watching right now? They're tuning in and they just had a setback. Like they, it just happened. They're going through it. They're in that moment right now. They're watching this because they're you know trying to get going. Uh, yeah. What would your words of encouragement be to that, that person? Great news. <laughs> You're in good company because every single person that's ever accomplished anything has gone through their own challenges back as well. But more importantly, understand this, you are at a hundred percent success rate for getting through every single challenge you've ever faced. Think about it. If you're in baseball and every single time you got the bat, you hit a home run, would you not thrive and be excited about getting up the bat? Well, guess what? That's where we're at right now. You have a hundred percent success rate of getting through every challenge you've ever gone through. This too shall pass, but more importantly, how could you stop looking at something as your greatest challenge and obstacle, but it might just be the greatest blessing and opportunity in disguise? Ah, great. Uh, second, uh, the last question, uh, what do you say to the person out there This this things are going well. They're like on this trajectory, they're feeling well. And you know, you may have found this to be true that sometimes the more success someone has, the more anxiety is there, the more pressure is there. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, how do I keep this thing going? What would you say to the person right now that needs to just keep going they, and they got to keep that momentum going right now? They've had some huge successes. They're a champion. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, you're a great company. The secret is surround yourself with other people that you have respect for, not people you have influence over. Look, if you've got your first rental condo, you can have some other neighbors to talk to all in the same boat. But if you got 10 rental condos, well, then it's few and far between. But if you have 100 rental condos, stop telling your buddies that you play poker and golf with because they're not on the same wavelength. Surround yourself with people of like mind that are having the same situations and mastermind with them because they can give you feedback from counsel, not just opinion. Well, let me say one thing, Greg. Thanks a lot for, for taking time to be here and support the Comeback Champion Summit. We certainly appreciate that. I want to turn over you to have your final thoughts, your final comments to empower, to inspire folks that are out there. Um, they'll see right below where they can connect with you. But if you want to verbalize that, let them know where they can connect with you as well. They'll see it across the banner as you're speaking. So my question to you is, uh, what are your final thoughts, your final comments? Again, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you and Sharon uh, for being here and being a part of this. Well, absolutely. And the realities for myself is that we are a reflection of the people we hang around the most. Our income, attitude, and lifestyle is the average of the group. If you hang around winners, you become one too. If you hang around people that complain, gripe, moan, then that too will be the conversation in your brain. The secret is ask yourself, who am I surrounding myself with? Are they uplifting and encouraging? And if not, find a new association, create our own mastermind group. Just like Les Brown says, you got greatness inside of you. It's time to fill our own cup first and then feed the world with what flows over. I'll see you soon.